our First Coast News investigation waiting for rebuild is prompting the state to take action. For months, we have been investigating the Rebuild Florida program. It's a state program funded with federal tax dollars to help hurricane victims. And we, along with our partners at 10 Tampa Bay, have spoken with dozens of frustrated homeowners who tell us they've waited years for the program to repair or replace their homes damaged in Hurricane Irma and they are tired of waiting. We took their concerns to the state agency overseeing the program and the state is listening. It's a visit Janet Jackson has been waiting for. One she says is long overdue. Today was kind of emotional for me because I've been going through this for a while and the thought that they finally came out and said that they were gonna do something about it kind of gave me a little relief. It even here now is coming apart. I didn't even see that one. Rewind a few months and she was showing us the problems with her North Jacksonville home. She hasn't been able to get the contractor to fix. She was frustrated and emotionally exhausted. I think it's ludicrous. It shouldn't have taken this long to to comp to repair a home when you close. See, she does. joined the Rebuild Florida program in 2019, grateful to get help repairing the damage Hurricane Irma caused. But years later, there's work that has have not been completed too small to make a blind. Don't we got still got garbage bags to our windows where we can't even get blinds put up because they didn't leave any space for any blinds to go up. Um, when they did the attic, they blew the, the uh, insulation in the attic. It sits right in the front. As soon as you open the attic, falls down. Woo. During her wait, the cost of her taxpayer funded project to repair her home quadrupled from 30,000 to 123,000, according to records we obtained. And the state paid for her to spend months in a hotel. Tell me how long you were in a hotel? Six months, 14 days. And how much did that cost taxpayers? $20,192. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's somebody's money that could be on another house for somebody's in need. Jane Moore knows her frustration. She spent 433 days in a hotel room, costing rebuild more than $86,000. That's more than the final scope of work the contractor charged to repair her Tampa home. I would come home every day to check the mail. And every day I would notice that no one's been here. Month after month after month. We were only supposed to be there for 90 days. Nicole Graves never expected her family would be living out of a hotel for more than a year while they waited for rebuild to deliver their new mobile home. And we had to use two rooms because there were six of us. Mac maximum occupancy is four. And because of the two rooms, um, the total bill was close to $80,000. Sean Moulton is with the nonpartisan watchdog group called Project on Government Oversight. The length of stays we've seen in some of these hotels raises serious questions about whether or not uh, the, the urgency was put on the homes that, that it should have been put on. We went to Tallahassee to get answers. Thankfully, the average cost for the Hurricane Amber program is actually still per home, one of our chief, actually it is our cheapest program we've ever had uh, in terms of the cost um, for whether it's repairs or rebuilds. The Secretary of Florida Commerce says the state made the decision to provide temporary housing at no cost to homeowners. Do you stand by that decision when we're looking at hotel bills? I mean, here's one, $76,000 for one family. We've seen $100,000 um, upwards of that for one family to stay in a hotel. Is that a wise use of taxpayer money? Some of those decisions are difficult. I, I'm not saying they're not. Some of those decisions are difficult because as we get into some of these uh, some of these situations for individual homeowners, we can definitely see that our contractor IEM and or one of our subcontractors who's actually doing the construction work, we can definitely see instances where those contractors could have gotten to the end of this process more quickly. The state awarded IEM a six-year, $252 million contract in 2018 to administer the Rebuild Florida IRMA program. IEM says it didn't have direct oversight to manage the contractors hired by Florida Commerce to carry out the work until 2021. So did IEM, Justin, drop the ball? In some cases, yes. Justin Domer, director of the Office of Long-Term Resiliency, says the state has imposed about three and a half million dollars in fines on IEM. And clearly, uh, our main contractor, IEM, clearly some of our contractors, uh, clearly they were, they were okay with abdicating their responsibility. IEM declined an interview, but in a statement said, we acknowledge the concerns raised by a small number of overall homeowners regarding incomplete and subpar work on their properties. These homeowner complaints are being addressed. 
The homeowners you've heard from represent less than 1% of the population being served by the Rebuild Florida Irma Homes. You see them? After we gave Florida Commerce the names of about two dozen homeowners still waiting for rebuild, they sent representatives to 27 homes, including Janet Jackson's, to see their concerns in person. And he said, we definitely will be back to do a lot of the stuff that has not been done. We're going to be back and going to try to make sure you're satisfied. I think if your reporting would not have taken place, I would still be just writing notes, just writing emails. I thank you guys for stepping in to help me and all of the others that you all have helped. Now, IEM emailed us a series of responses to our questions, which you can read in their entirety in the Rebuild Florida section on the First Coast News app. The company says despite unprecedented factors, including the pandemic, it has achieved a 95% completion rate of its Rebuild Florida Hurricane Irma initiative. The company also sent us a video of its CEO saying that the remaining home should be completed by July 25th. And our investigation continues tomorrow night at 11. What we've learned about a possible case of fraud involving a project marked complete that has now been referred to the state attorney's office. That's tomorrow night at 11.